Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the internal jugular vein. The internal jugular vein is a major vein of the neck region. It is the direct continuation of the sigmoid sinus. So this is the sigmoid sinus here and from the sigmoid sinus it, it will be continued the sigmoid sinus will be continued as the internal jugular vein in the jugular foramen. It begins at the posterior part of the jugular foramen, descends in the carotid sheath. In the carotid sheath, we have also the common carotid artery, we have the internal carotid artery, and the vagus nerve. The internal jugular vein ends behind the sternal end of the clavicle. Here is the location of the sternal end of the clavicle. It ends there in the brachiocephalic vein. This is the brachiocephalic vein. The brachiocephalic vein is formed by the union of the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein. Then we'll get the brachiocephalic vein. Two brachiocephalic vein will unite to form the superior vena cava okay it is a superior bulb in the jugular fossa there's a dilatation here it is an inferior bulb in the lesser supraclavicular fossa here there is another bulb and that bulb is also guarded by a bulb okay a bulb guarding the dilatation of the inferior bulb of the internal jugular vein it is covered by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So the external jugular vein is over the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Internal, internal jugular vein is mostly covered by the or underneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It receives blood from the brain, face, and neck. Okay. So what are the tributaries of the internal jugular vein? We have the inferior petrosal sinus that is present in the cranial cavity, common facial vein, okay, the lingual vein, pharyngeal vein, superior thyroid vein, we have the superior thyroid vein, we have the middle thyroid vein, okay, and occasionally we also get the occipital vein. Okay, we got the inferior petrosal sinus, common facial vein. Here is the facial vein. Here is the common facial vein here. Okay, and we have the lingual vein, not shown here. Lingual vein. Okay, so the Pharyngeal vein, superior third vein, middle thyroid vein, and occipital vein. Okay, and here we are getting the facial vein here. This is the facial vein here, the superior thyroid vein here. We have the middle thyroid vein here. Okay, and if we go through the relationship to that of the internal jugular vein, it is covered by the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the posterior period of the diagnostic is behind it and the internal carotid artery is medial and posterior to it and also the vagus nerve is posterior and medial to the internal jugular vein the internal jugular vein is also related to the scalene anterior scalene medius muscle okay the vein is over it over it and this vein is crossed by the omohyoid this is the intermediate tendon of omohyoid superior belly this is the inferior belly of omohyoid muscle so these are the relationship and the left internal jugular vein passes in front of the thoracic duct and thoracic duct opens the junction between the left internal jugular vein left subclavian vein on the right side the right internal jugular vein right subclavian vein this junction will get the right lymphatic duct.
the internal jugular vein also connected to the external jugular vein and occipital vein may be a tributary of the internal jugular vein okay this is the thoracic duct it it pick up around 75 percent of our limbs this is the right lymphatic duct and that pick up around 25 percent of total lymphatics of our body so how can we we make the outline of the internal jugular vein the surface anatomy this is the surface anatomy internal jugular vein can be outlined by joining the following two points first point on the lobule of the ear so if we if we go there first point should be at the lobule of the ear here and the second point on the medial end of the clavicle here is the second point and we make a double line here and we'll get the internal jugular vein here we should have a dilatation in the lower part inferior ball we have also another dilatation at the upper part okay and there may be there is a valve here valve mechanism here in the lower part so this is the internal jugular vein okay now what is the clinical importance of internal jugular vein internal jugular vein is very important for many reasons one to assess the cardiac health specifically the condition of the right atrium okay we can assess the pulsation of the internal jugular vein and we can assess the jugular venous pressure so internal jugular vein is so important clinically and also internal jugular vein is essential to give some type of therapeutic medication to avoid phlebitis or any type of inflammation in, at the peripheral vein so directly it is used very quickly and usually the right internal jugular vein is chosen because it is more straight and it is directly connected very closely connected to the right atrium so right internal jugular vein is chosen to to make one internal venous line for therapeutic purpose to draw blood to give the medication through the internal jugular vein so the internal jugular vein has a lot of clinical importance okay and that's all about the anatomy of the internal jugular vein again we have to recollect internal jugular vein is continued from the sigmoid sinus in the jugular foramen it is a content of carotid sheath and it end up in the in the brachiocephalic vein it forms brachiocephalic vein by the union of the subclavian vein at the medial end of the clavicle at the level of thoracic vertebra one internal jugular vein has multiple tributaries it drain blood from the brain from the face and neck it has tributaries like that of common facial vein inferior pectoral sinus the lingual vein and superior thyroid vein middle thyroid vein and occasionally occipital vein an internal jugular vein can be outlined we have surface anatomy by two point one point at the lobule of the ear at the root of the lobule of the ear another point at the medial end of the clavicle then we make a double line from the point one to point two and we have two dilatation inferior bulb and superior bulb and inferior bulb has a bulb okay so that is the internal jugular vein and it is clinically important to produce to make an internal venous line to introduce medication to assess the the cardiac condition especially right atrial atrial pressure it is assessed and we also can get the jugular venous pulse and that's all about the 
anatomy of the internal jugular vein. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friend and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.